Hey, I'm Axel, and today we're going to look at creating a roll transition in HitFilm. Now, there are a bunch of different transitions included in the software that you can just drag onto your footage and they're good to go. But sometimes you might want to create something a little bit more custom, and HitFilm gives you the tools to do that as well. Let's jump into HitFilm 4 Express and take a look. So, here's the effect we'll be creating, where one clip sort of rolls through the frame and we end on another clip. Looking at the result, we can isolate and identify the techniques involved here. First, of course, we have animation of the frames rolling past. Then there is some blur applied, which obscures the contents of the frames so that the transition is seamless. And there is an increase in brightness as well, which helps to give it some polish. So, let's get into it. You can download my project file if you want to follow along, but I encourage you to use your own footage instead to get a feel for how you can use this technique in your own projects. All you need is two video clips, and we will create the transition between them. Right-click the first clip in the media panel or on the timeline, and select Make Composite Shot. Accept the settings, then add your second clip to the timeline above the first. We're going to create our transition between the one-second mark and the two-second mark. So, from the New Layer menu, create a grade layer, and trim it so it starts at one second and ends at two seconds. This layer will hold the effects used in our transition, but by trimming it, it also gives us reference points for our timing. Then go ahead and zoom in the timeline view on that beginning section. Then adjust the second clip so it starts at one and a half seconds, at the midpoint of the transition area. I'm using 25 frames per second, so the midpoint in my case is 1.13, but the exact time code in your project will depend on the frame rate you are working in. And of course, you can create the transition at any time code you want in an actual edit. It doesn't have to start at one second. At the point where our second clip appears, let's keyframe its opacity so the transition is a bit softer. At around one and three quarters seconds, enable keyframing for the opacity of the second video. Then move back to the first frame of that clip and reduce opacity to zero. If you want that fade to be centered within the transition, you can just shift the clip over a bit, but that's up to you. You might want to tweak that a bit after the effect is done, when you can see how it impacts the finished result. Now, we are ready to animate the rolling frames. Select both video layers, then press Command D, or Control D if you're on Windows, twice, to duplicate those layers two times each. Now, we will offset each of these copies by the height of the frame. 1080 pixels to create a sort of film strip. Set the position Y of the second copy of clip 1 to 1080. Then on the third copy to double that, 2160. If you zoom the viewer out, you can see exactly where these layers are now positioned above the visible frame. Use the same values for the second and third copies of clip 2. Then select all three copies of clip 2 and the two duplicates of clip 1 and parent them all to the original copy of Clip 1. Now we can keyframe the position of that one parent layer to move all of our clips at once. So let's do that. At one second, enable keyframing for the position of Clip 1. Right click that keyframe and set Temporal Interpolation to Smooth Out. This will cause the movement to start gradually. Then move to 2 seconds and set position Y to minus 2160. Then set that keyframe interpolation to smooth in. Now if we play through that, we can view our animation. That's good to go. So onward to our next component, the blur. Find the blur effect in the effects panel and add it to our grade layer. Move the playhead to the center of our transition. In the controls for the blur, switch the dimension to vertical so it only blurs the image up and down, increase the radius to 300 or so, then enable keyframing for the radius property. Move back to a few frames after one second, and set the radius... Meow. Meow. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. That is an interrupting cat. And he is mouthy today. Clearly, he felt I needed his input on this technique, and you know what? He's probably right. Anyway, our blur radius is set to 300, and keyframing for the radius is enabled. 
Move back to a few frames after one second and set the radius to zero. Then do the same a few frames before two seconds. So our blur goes quickly from non-existent to completely obscuring the image, then back to nothing. Quick and simple. Now let's adjust the brightness. For this, we will use the brightness and contrast effect. But you could also use levels or curves or glow, crush blacks and whites, or maybe you have an add-on that gives you exposure. There's lots of different tools you could use, and each will give slightly different styles to the end result. But for simplicity, I'm using brightness. At the first keyframe of the blur, enable keyframing for both the brightness and contrast properties. Then at the center of the effect, adjust the values to get the look you want. I think 75 for both brightness and contrast is pretty good. Then move to the last keyframe of the blur and set both values back to zero. And now for our next trick, I guess we'll be done. Play the transition back to see the result. Then if you feel like it should be modified in any way, you can fine tune whichever settings you want. So there it is. Just a few minutes and we have a nifty custom transition. Seriously though, I do have another trick for you. We are going to make another variation of this transition using the TV damage effect. If you are using HitFilm Pro, you already have this effect. But if you are using Express, this one will require you to purchase the Destruction Pack add-on. So, everybody can do that first version for free. But if you have the TV damage effect, here's a variation that's a bit more grungy. And also a lot faster. In a new comp, we will start roughly the same way, with our two clips on the timeline and the second clip starting at one and a half seconds. Then we add our grade layer and trim it to run from one second to two seconds. Now add the TV damage effect. This effect has a bunch of components, which do some really cool stuff, but the only one we need here is vertical hold. So go ahead and turn off radio interference, horizontal hold, and vignette. The others are already off by default. Now, let's focus on the vertical hold. This component creates procedural variations in the vertical position of the image and lets you control the frequency of the variations, how regular their timing is, how much blur accompanies the motion, and the gap between the images. First off, set the gap to zero, because we don't need it. Then, turn the frequency up to about 17. And already, that gives us a nice effect. The duration of the grade layer defines the start and end point of the transition. And you could leave it just like that if you wanted. As a variation, turn the blur up to one. Shush. It sounds like Stoli, that's my cat, likes it better that way. Maybe you do too. If not, there's no right or wrong here. This is just style. To get more of a rolling effect, like our first transition, Let's turn up the regularity around 0.7. Different regularity values will give different results, so feel free to experiment with other settings and dial this in just the way you want it. So this second method is obviously a bit faster to set up and to modify, and a lot of the variation is controlled automatically to give it that more grungy, jumpy style. But if you prefer to have full manual control, or if you just want to use the free software without purchasing any add-ons, then the first method is the way to go. So thanks for watching, and hopefully you find these two transition techniques timely and tactical, and the training in the tutorial thorough. Let us know if you find them useful, or if there are other similar techniques that you would like to learn. And until next time, I will bid you farewell. And Stoli also bids you farewell. And he says you should subscribe. Move back to a few frames after one second and set the radius. Meow. 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 Meow.
Moral. Meow. Meow.